Hi, scrolling along with Susan. I have a new technique I'd like to show you today. It's called relief cutting to use with the scroll saw. And the way that you do that is um, it's a little bit more advanced than your average way of scroll sawing. But once you get the hang of it, it's rather simple. So here I have a piece of scrap wood that I practice on. This is just three quarter inch thick cedar. And you use a pilot hole for each letter and you cut at an angle with your scroll saw. So when you are completed, you can actually push the letters out and they will almost lock in place and it's a relief. You can also do it so that it sinks in, but I'd like to show you how I do lettering. I suggest that you start with either pine or a soft wood, like I have cedar and probably no more than three quarters inch thick so that your first attempt is a successful one and then later on if you want to use hardwoods you know go for that but always make sure the piece is very well sanded it is prepped and ready to go and all of the sawdust has been removed before you put your paper on it or you're going to be drawing on it to cut it out. I like to use tracing paper here instead of gluing this to the backer board because I want to see clearer what I'm doing to the wood instead of through paper. But I mean if you want to use tape or you, you apply your piece however you wish to. And I've already measured it so it's evenly distributed on, whoa, I just shifted it, evenly distributed on all sides. And then I'm just going to trace over the letters. The next thing you need to determine is where you're going to be drilling your pilot hole. And you want to put it in an inconspicuous place. So I'm going to put it underneath the T, and you want the pilot hole to be on the backer board, not the actual letter. So I'm going to put it there. I'm going to put it up here in the H. And I'm going to put it in the corner here of an E. And it will be a lot less noticeable when it's cut out and you go forward on it. You will barely be able to see those pilot holes. Hopefully you can see this. I'm going to be cutting at about 2.8 degrees on my scroll saw, almost 3 degrees, and I'm going to be curving the pilot hole the same direction that I'm going to be cutting. And I know that this machine has where I can tilt the base, but it's just easier if I just stick something underneath it to get that angle so I can drill the pilot holes. When I'm at my scroll saw, I'll be cutting counterclockwise. So I want this pilot hole to go this direction. Make sure you mark it up so that it will not cut into the letter. So you can see it's really close right there, but it's still going to be in this scrap part or the backing. For this letter H, I'm going to turn it upside down because again, I want it to I want the angle to be at the letter. If you do not have a drill press like I do, you can certainly use a hand drill. It's going to be a little difficult uh, if you do not have an angle gauge to get the exact 2.8 percent angle but um, you can kind of eyeball it and try to do the best you can. At my scroll saw and you can see it's right 2.7, 2.8 but it's really close to the same degree. I've got my table tilted to the same degree that I did my pilot hole. Now your machine might not have, actually if the table's not tilted, my machine actually tables the head where some machines tilt the table. Either way is fine and if you don't have one of these little fancy guys, they're not very expensive but you have a degree on a lot of these 
tables that tell you where 2.8 or 3 or wherever you decide to put the angle is fine and definitely definitely use scrap and do three or four letters to make sure it's set exactly how you want it you might only want two degrees or you might what might want a little bit more but I like 2.8 okay, I have a number 5 MGT Pegasus blade um, I could go to a number three this is a soft wood but uh, number five seems to work out pretty well so I am threading it through, bringing it down. It's easier to see the angle when you actually bring it down. And you can see it's, it's at an angle. Make sure it tests the tension. Well, I need to readjust that here. Now I'm going to be cutting counterclockwise. So I'm going to be going this direction when I'm cutting. If you go clockwise, the letters will sink in. Counterclockwise, they can be raised up. The piece is cut. If you lift it up, it's going to fall right out that side. But the idea is that you're going to push it this direction and it's nice and firmly in there and you can barely barely see that pilot hole which is exactly what you want okay I'm ready to do the next one to show you again now you probably saw that I got off quite a few times here with with this letter this is kind of a funky letter so it doesn't matter but you have a tendency when the table is tilted or the main part is tilted to want to go that direction so that's why you always want to use a practice piece before using your real piece so you can get the feel of it and know how to counteract not taking that curve the way that it wants to curve now I'm just going to cut the next two letters always remembering you're going to be cutting counterclockwise If it helps you to slow down the machine or just slow down your cutting to stay on the line better and to not push, then please do so. What I did to this piece is I just cut off the ends or angled the ends to make it a little less boxy. Now I've sanded all of it. I gently sanded a small round over on the top part of all the letters. You could do a deeper round over if you'd like, or just leave it like it is. So let's put this together. And what you do is you push to lock it in place. There's my T, and they're all going to be the same level because you cut them all at the same angle. And you can barely, barely see the little pilot holes. If that really bothers you, you can always um, fill that in, but I don't even think you'd notice it. Because it's three quarter of an inch thick, you can put um, something on the back to hang it on the wall. And you, I might just finish it just with a clear coat to kind of bring out the wood a little bit. One more thing about this project. On the back part, a lot of people use a glue gun to secure the pieces in so they will not slide it out. I would think it would be easier to use clear glue so that it won't be as messy, but either way, they will work. So I hope you've enjoyed this project on relief cutting and might give it a try. Hey, thanks for watching.